वेलकम बैक टू पार्ट थ्री ऑफ आर वीडियो सीरीज ऑन वायर ईडीएम इन दिस वीडियो वी विल फोकस ऑन थ्री थिंग्स स्पीड एक्यूरेसी एंड सरफेस फिनिश द थिंग्स विच आर मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर एनी वायर कट मशीन सो एक्साइटेड अबाउट दीज वॉच इट टिल दिन If you are a wire EDM user, then you already know that speed and accuracy are very important for you. Unfortunately, these two things don't go together. If you want precision, then you have to slow down. And if you want to cut fast, then your surface finish and accuracies are going to suffer. Hence, it's a trade-off. So, what do we do about it? Well, let's try and explore that. So, let's talk about speed first. Did you know that today's wire EDMs? are almost 10 times faster than the machines back in the 80s well what made this change possible the first thing that changed in these machines is the machine design itself the older machines were quite cool but they were very clunky and not very reliable and hence they were quite slow the most important thing for a wire edm is the power supply in the early days the power supply equipment weren't as advanced the machines had a very slow response time and hence had a very poor performance plus they couldn't be connected to computers to control them but today's power supply equipment is very sophisticated and very reliable in addition to improvement in machine design and power supply equipment the technology which has helped improve the cutting speeds is the adaptive control because of this technology we can achieve speeds of up to 45 square inches per hour with some machines when it comes to wire cutting not all material are created equal the type of material and the thickness of the workpiece are critical factors to be considered in any wire cutting process as a thumb rule harder materials like carbide or alloy steel are better compared to softer materials like aluminum because they have fewer impurities and lower porosity this makes it easier and hence faster to cut them this is also one of the reasons why wire cutting cold rolled steel is a challenge comparatively cold rolled steel takes a longer time to wire cut and in spite of the slower speed you may not achieve the desired surface finish on the other hand when it comes to surface finish softer materials like aluminum may be faster to cut but they have a tendency to deform what this means is that achieving a good surface finish for these materials is a quite a bit of a challenge because there is no way that they can resist the deformation as the harder ones do in contrast it is possible to have a good surface finish in materials like carbide even though their work pieces might be thicker since their hardness allows them to resist the deformation the fundamental reason why a wire cutting process is slower compared to other traditional metal cutting operations it has to do something with a typical wire cutting operation itself usually a wire edm needs to make several passes to cut the same work piece at different speeds usually the first pass is called the roughing cut and the goal of this pass is to remove as much material as possible at a faster speed without caring much about the inaccuracies in the dimension or the surface finish the subsequent cuts in the whole wire cutting process are called skim cuts and they remove lesser and lesser material with every pass the goal of these cuts is to achieve or come closer to the dimensional accuracy and the surface finish just to give you an example in order to achieve a 4 or 5 ra value surface finish you may need to take 6 to 7 skim cut what slows down the operation even further is that with every cut you may need to adjust or make minor adjustments in the machine like the tension of the wire or the current or you may have to change the filter of the dielectric or control the temperature of the dielectric so taking into consideration all these factors the wire cut process becomes extremely slow but all this leads to exceptional dimensional accuracy and surface finish in order to achieve the highest degree of machining accuracy using a wire edm a number of variables come into play and they may include things like the correct wire material its tension and its diameter or the correct power setting 
or the condition of your deionized water and its flushing arrangement. However, almost all machinists think that these are the only factors that they need to consider. However, expert machinists who provide solutions to challenging applications in medical or aerospace sectors, they consider many other factors and try to control them. For example, temperature and humidity are two primary factors which can affect the accuracy of your wire EDA. The greater the temperature fluctuations, the more chances there are that your machine's performance will be altered because of that. In order to achieve the best possible performance from your high precision wire cut machine, it's important that you control the environment that it works in. That is a temperature within a range of about 20 to 25 degrees centigrade and a relative humidity of 40% or lower. Running a wire cut machine in a non-temperature controlled environment can lead to more inaccuracies thanks to a phenomenon known as thermal growth. Now, of course, the uh, thermal coefficient of your workpiece material also plays a role in this. However, many shops and especially in a country like India face temperature fluctuations of about 10 degrees between day and night. Let's talk about an example. Let's say you're cutting a one meter long workpiece. That 10 degree temperature fluctuation will play a big role because your part may be shrinking or growing at about 0.1 millimeters. Now you may think that this does not sound much, but it does matter when you are thinking about precision and dimensional accuracy within microns. Another important factor for deciding your machining accuracy is the fundamental basis of your machine itself, whether it is based on a ball screw or linear motion. Now, each of these designs has its own pros and cons. And let's try to explore them one by one. When it comes to torque, ball screws has a huge advantage over linear motors, in especially in moving heavy loads, like a large workpiece or a large work tank filled with water. Linear motors need massive amounts of electricity to generate the torque. And this requires then additional cooling equipment. Ball screws has an advantage because the torque is generated at the screw because of its pitch and the diameter and hence it requires lower power. When it comes to longevity and maintenance, the linear motors get a slight advantage over ball screws. It's not the case that ball screws need a lot of maintenance. However, they do require some additional equipment like the core cooling facility or auto lubrication facility in order to reduce the wear in the ball screws. In the linear motors, these kind of additional equipments are not required. For accuracy, again, linear motors get a slight advantage, especially for larger loads. For speed, hands down, linear motors are a preferred choice. When it comes to cost, again, linear motors get a slight advantage because there are no moving parts. So overall, you can see that linear motor based machines perform much better compared to ball screw based machines. However, it also depends on the type of workpiece that you may be constantly cutting. If they are large, definitely ball screw based machines should be preferred. So that wraps things up. I hope you have a better understanding regarding speed, accuracy and surface finish in a wire EDM. If you haven't checked out the previous two videos, in this series, please check them out here and stay tuned for part 4 in this series where we discuss about the dielectric fluid and its maintenance.